All right, now we're back at the workshop. All I've done to this point in time is put a plastic bag around the tree, use some electrical tape to hold it in position, and got it up high, um, a little bit closer to eye level so I can see the tree. Um, I want to spin the tree around now. Um, the root ball is nice and moist so I don't have to worry about it drying out. What I'm looking for at the moment is to find the best front for this tree. And we have a couple options. We have this here as an option, um, which is a pretty decent front. The only problem was we had a gurgling root here that I had to remove and we have this kind of weird uh, in, in cut into the root, into the nabari, um, which may not be the best option for the front of the tree. Great part about this tree is it's got radial roots all the way around it, so you know we have several options. This here is another option for the front of the tree on this side. There's not a whole lot of uh, back budding in the, in the, on down this line. Um, we do have quite a few buds on the side here, which is great. Um, you see obviously we have the leaves popping out on this side. If we come over here to this side, uh, we have dormant buds here, here, and up, and up through here as this tree progresses. We have dormant buds up in here as well. Um, so I think this might actually be a little bit better front for the tree than the other side, which was what I initially selected. What we're going to do from here is I have a um, handle off of a hammer, a wooden axe handle off of a hammer. This is a cheap tool that you can get because everybody's got a broken hammer handle laying around somewhere. And um, I just basically took it to a belt sander and this is what I've come up with. It's kind of a wooden root rake, I guess you could say. Um, and what I'll be doing is um, finding a root and taking this and going down the top of it to expose the entire nabari. Um, from all these fibrous roots. I'm not worried about damaging them. There's so many of them in here still that it's not going to be an issue. The one thing I do need to look out for and make sure I don't damage are the dormant buds that are on the tree. But I want to expose the entire Nabari surface um, and see what we're dealing with just to make sure this is going to be the most appropriate front for the tree. Um, this is a little time consuming so I just wanted to uh, kind of show you the basics of what I'm doing here. I need to expose this Nabari. may have to get some scissors in here as well and do some cutting. But this is a very important step because this tree has not been designed for bone size. This tree was designed as a park tree or a street tree. Um, so there's going to be a lot of fibrous roots that are circling the trunk and the Nabari and I want to get rid of those because those will eventually choke the tree out. So by using this piece I can go along the Nabari and go in an outward direction to remove all those surface roots from the top of the tree because eventually we're going to be exposing that nabari and that's the portion of the tree that you're looking to develop first anyway. Um, from there we'll worry about the rest of the tree. So I need to do that. Um, any large roots that are down below here we'll visit those here in a little while. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this and I'll come back in a little while once I've taken care of that portion of this tree and uh, we will go from there. All right. I must confess, <clears throat> I cheated a little bit due to time constraints on this tree. We saw the good, the tree. We saw the bad. It was in a big, huge ball, and it was 15 feet tall. We've gotten through all of that so far, and I'm going to show you the ugly. With trident maples, I, this is fine to do as far as a technique because of how prolific their roots are. Other species, this would not be a good idea. It would be imminent death for the tree. This is the other thing. When you're dealing with field-grown material that was grown for nursery stock versus pre-bonsai stock, you have huge tap roots. And you reduce the root ball as much as you can to get it home. Once you get it home, you have to deal with this gnarly network of huge tap roots at the bottom. I have two methods of solving this. One of them is a chainsaw, the other one is with a sawzall. All of my trident maples that you've seen so far to this point have all had this technique implied to them and you can see how they're growing nowadays. Once this technique's done, this is the reason why we let these trees rest for two years 
and don't do anything to them but water and fertilize. Here you go. The bottom side of this tree had one, two, three, four, five, six humongous taproots. I mean, if you look at this taproot, that taproot's probably four, four inches or better in diameter, and so is this one, and so is this one. The key is to cut them off flush and to cut them off with a sharp blade. The chainsaw will work. I have a sawzall that has a pruning blade that I purchased at a home, home store, and that works well also. Over the next two years, the, what you see here, what's left of the root base is going to develop the roots. These will actually heal completely over. So by three years growing time from now, when you go to repot this, you're still going to have a little bit of root work that you're going to have to do to these areas. But these will be 99% healed over. And that's why we let them rest. This tree will not produce a whole ton of apical growth or branching or anything like that. And the reason being is it's focusing on root production and healing those large wounds underneath there. Sometimes they don't heal all the way. Not a problem. Um, that's still a live part of the tree. It's going to produce resins, which will help with rotting control. Um, you can see now the nabari on this tree. We've got quite a bit of work still left to do on this tree. Um, this is all we're going to do for this season. Again, we've insulted this tree immensely. Imagine having 90% of your lungs removed and then stuck in a smaller confined area and expected to live. That's pretty much what we're doing with this trident. Um, they're tough little things, they're tough trees, and they bounce right back. It takes a few years for them to get there, but when you do these techniques on these type of trees, you're going to get a better result in the long run. Number one, it's going to be able to fit in a shorter pot, which you know makes the base of the tree look more massive and makes the entire tree look more ancient. You're getting a massive caliber of trunk. I can't even, I can't touch my hands around the diameter of the trunk at the base here. I, I can reach across it, but I can't barely touch my hands, my, my fingers and my thumbs together. That's another benefit. And these are the things you have to do when you're on a budget like I am and can't afford to go out and spend five, six thousand dollars on a tree. So far today I've spent $150 on this tree, five dollars of gas, and that's pretty much it. So, you know, I've had you know five, six dollars for a growing tub. Um, let's say maximum I've got $250 into this tree. So these, these are the techniques that I use to get the results that I have on my trees. I wanted to show you one from beginning how it's done, how I go out, I find them, what I do once I find them, and get them into a growing container, which is what we're going to do next. I'm going to be putting this tree, not only that, but this tree is so much lighter now. It's still a pretty immense chunk of wood, but nonetheless it's a considerable amount less in weight than it was before. This also gives us an opportunity to remove as much of that field soil as possible. Um, this particular tree was grown in a, like a, almost a clay type soil. Um, it's allowed it to grow lots of fine fibrous roots, but at the same time this stuff's heavy. And um, that's not the kind of soil we want this in. We want it in bonsai soil, so we remove as much of that as possible. Um, from here I'm going to go ahead and put it in a pot, get it in some soil. I'm going to tie it off. I'll show you the tree after it's been tied off. I'll explain a little bit what I mean by tying it off. And um, we will be finished with this series.